Uh, greetings, greetings, fellow Greek tens. It's Mr. Tlatoyo again. Now, welcome back to another video. And what we are examining, uh, basically now we are examining a paper of 20, uh, of November 2015, right? So this is our final November 2015 uh, question paper. And we are still looking at our trig function, right? Now, let's start here. Now, they say in the diagram below, the graph of f, it is given by negative uh, 2 cos x and uh, is drawn from the interval of 0 degrees to 360 degrees, right? Now, what is it that you are going to do now first? Now, in order for us to be in a position to answer this question, let's look at the first thing. They say now write down the amplitude of the graph, right? Now, before we can even answer that, we need to understand what is the amplitude, right? So we are saying our uh, amplitude, basically, it is the lowest uh, or the highest point in a graph, right? Or the highest point in your particular graph. And what is the lowest or the highest point in, the, in this particular graph, right? So the highest point here, can you see it, it is two, right? Uh, in here, it's going to be a two and the lowest point is going to be negative two. How to get and whenever you are representing your amplitude we represent it in a positive number right so which means 6.1.1 the highest or the lowest point of this particular graph or your amplitude right your amplitude it is going to be given by what by two because the highest point here it is two and the lowest point it is what negative two and i'm saying whenever you're writing the amplitude you only write the positive number even if it was a yeah, negative two or two you're still going to just write the two how to get now let's look at now uh the second one now in uh your what in your six uh point two point one they say now write down the minimum value of f of x uh, f of x plus 3. Now, basically, now we need to start by understanding what does this plus 3 means, right? So, basically, the plus 3, it means now uh, the graph of f of x, it is shifted how many units? It is shifted 3 units uh, upward, right? So, basically, it just means it is shifted 3 units upward. And what do we know then if that particular graph, it is going to be shifted 3 units upward? Uh, now, for us to have our minimum point, remember what was our minimum point? It was negative 2, right? So, which means uh, in here for 6.2, uh, right? The minimum point, it is what? It is negative 2, right? So, it is negative 2. And the negative 2 is going to be shifted 3 units upward. So, it's going to be negative, uh, you know, 2 plus 3, which will then give you what? Which will give you uh, what you want, right? So, which means basically your minimum point here. Your minimum point it's going to be one because this graph now it's going to have uh, started one and basically the maximum point let's say they were looking for the maximum point you are going to say also two plus three which means the maximum point now it was going to be what it was going to be five how to get so basically that's now going to be uh your what your minimum point now uh in this particular thing now they say on the same set of axes uh now uh they say, uh, now draw the graph of G where the G of X is equal to sine X plus one for the interval zero degrees uh, in between zero and, uh, you know what, uh, 360 degrees. So basically what they want us to draw. Now they want us to draw the graph of sine of X uh, that where it is graph of sine of X plus one. So what is it that you are going to do? Already we know that the graph of sine of x, it is shifted what? One unit upward. And ordinarily, ordinarily we know that the graph of uh, of x started zero. It moves basically like this. How do you get? So this is the graph of sine of x where this is your 108 degrees, where this is uh, at 90 degrees, and this is at what? 270 degrees, and this being your 360 degrees, right? But they are saying now, this new graph of uh, sine of x, it is what? It is a graph of sine of x plus 1, which means now where it's supposed to start at 0, now it's going to start what? At 1, which means basically all these particular points are going to be shifted one unit upward, right? So now, how are we then going to plot this? Now, I'm just going to come and plot this graph in this same set of axes. So we are, I'm going to use this Cartesian plane to draw this particular graph, right? Now, let's see. What is it that you are going to have here? Let's 
uh, fix this one. Now we are going to say now, the original graph was going to start here and have a turning point here and have uh, the intercept here, uh, you know, and everything like that. So basically it was going to start here and have the turning point at one, not at two, right? So which means now it's going to start here. So which means now if it start here, it's going to start here at one. Now, remember it was going to have the turning point at one and 90 degrees. So it's going to be shifted one unit upward. And now similarly, this one, the intercept it's going to be where now it is going to be at one also because that's going to be a new point of uh, of equilibrium and the turning point it's no longer going to be at negative one but it's going to be at zero and this other point it's going to be shifted where it's going to be here how it's again so basically which means this new graph of ours that we are going to plot uh, it is going to wet it's going to start here it is going to move like this cut here move like this like that and it ends like this right so basically this is going to be the new graph of what the new graph of sign how to get and now if you are not sure you can always plug these particular value into your uh calculator and you are still going to get the same shape of this particular graph right so now basically this is going to be how your graph looks like right now let's look at now uh the following questions, right? So you are going to just plot this graph and then you get your full three marks, right? Now let's look at your four uh your six point four point one. Now they say the value of f of x uh of f of one hundred ten uh eight degrees subtract what uh f of uh uh this or subtract the g of one hundred and eight degrees. Now this one is simple. So basically we are going to come here. We are going to say uh in 6.4.1. Now this is going to be f of uh 108 degrees, right? So what is going to be f of 108 degrees? This is negative 2 uh into cos of what? Into cos of 108 degrees. Remember, where there is uh x, you substitute 108 degrees. And what is the answer that you are going to get now? Uh the answer that you are going to get, this is going to be same as 2, right? When you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get this as 2. And now, what is going to be the G of that? And which makes sense because now, when you say it, where your negative F of, uh, it is what? It is 180 degrees. Can you see your 180 degrees is basically where? Uh, for your graph of F of X. For the graph of F of X, 180 degrees is here. Right? So, it's here. So, which means it's this particular point. I would get. So, you are going to indeed get two. And then now, the G of 108 degrees, again, is going to be same as what? Uh, it is going to be same as, uh, you plug this in your calculator, sine of, uh, this is going to be 180 degrees, then plus one. And this is going to be same as what? This is going to be same as one, right? So, but they said this is what? F of 180 degrees subtract the g of what 180 degrees right and basically these points are these two points where this one is two and where this one is one right so they say these highest graph here subtract this lowest graph here right so this is going to be same as what as two subtract one and what is going to be that particular distance this is going to be given by one how to get so now that is going to be the answer for that particular question Right now, let's look at your 6.4.2. Now, they say for which values? Now, they say for which values of uh, what for which values are uh, of x uh, will the graph of f of x and g of x be greater than zero? Right? Uh, look, we've discussed this in the past questions that now look whenever they regard where f of x and g of x are what are greater than zero, this is simple. Now, basically, they want where if this is your, your y graph, right? Uh, if this is your line of equilibrium, they want where your graphs are above, whether your graph moves like this or like this, but they want basically where your graph are going to be above the what? Are above the x axis. How would you get? So, and now for this particular thing, the number, or now if you can do it, you know, theoretically, now, if you are having, let's say, a, a number here and a number here, a number that can give you something that is greater than zero, it's always going to be the positive number and the positive number, it's going to give you something that is greater than zero. Or the negative and the negative 
when you multiply them together, they also give you something that is positive, right? So we are going to look at where your graph is above the x-axis or both your graphs are below the x-axis. Are we together? So now that is where we are going to uh, basically look at. Now, what is it that you're going to do now here? Now, uh, if you can start here, now, if you can start here, now, if you can look at this graph, starting from here, can you see that this graph is above the x axis here? But now, if you can look at the graph of g of x, the other graph here, can you see here? It is below, right? And which means this one is positive and this one is negative. And we are looking for either positive, positive, or negative, negative. So, which means that these two points, firstly, are not applicable, right? So, which means these first two points are not applicable. But now, if you can look starting from here, starting from here and here. Now, if you can look at this graph moving up until here, let's say up until here, right? Uh, up until here or it continue. Can you see this graph is still above the x-axis? And if you can look at, again, this particular graph here, uh, if you can look at this other one, can you see both of these graphs are still above uh, your what? Uh, your y-axis and now if these both of these graph are above your uh, y-axis then which means starting from here from here and here both of these graphs are positive because they are above uh, your what they are above your y-axis i want to get now which means this is going to be between there uh now so what is going to be there for the way which we can represent so we are going to say now Basically, where your graph, uh, both of your graph are greater than zero, it's going to be where what, where your y it is, uh, what, uh, it is going to be where your x, uh, is going to be in between what, it is going to be in between ninety degrees and what, and two hundred and seventy degrees, right? Because it starts from here, and it ends in here. So basically, it's going to be in between these two particular points. That's where your graph is going to be what greater than zero. I would again. Then now you write this. Or oh, another way of writing this, it's going to be where your y is your element of. Now you can represent this because now this one are uh, these particular points are not included. So you're going to use this bracket, right? And, and because when you are saying at these particular points, now the graph start to decrease, the other one start to increase. So it's basically uh in between what it's going to be where your x is in between 90 degrees and what and 270 degrees, right? So you can write it this way or you can write it this way. It's still absolutely correct. How to get? Now, uh, let's look at 6.5.1 now. And now what do they basically require us to do there? Now, uh, in 6.5.1, uh, this particular question, they say now, firstly, now uh, the graph of F uh, is reflected about the X axis. Remember I said, if it's reflect reflected about the x axis, the y change, the y change, right? Your y will change and be negative. And it moves what? Three units upward. Uh, now, to form the equation of h, determine h. Now, what is it that you are going to do? They are saying now, firstly, uh, if the new graph of what? The new graph of what? Uh, the new graph of f, this is going to be the same as negative h of x. Uh, is equals to what is equals to f of x plus 3 right basically that's going to be the right way of representing this and now if you are doing that then you are going to multiply by negative everywhere and when you multiply by negative everywhere this is going to be what now h of x is equals to negative into what uh, into a uh, negative cos of what cos of x and this negative will also uh, multiply in here right because it multiplied everything this is going to be now plus three and now when you are multiplying with negative everywhere what is it that you're going to do when you are multiplying with negative everywhere the thing that you are going to have here this is going to be same as what negative multiplied by negative is going to be positive so this is going to be cos x and negative multiplied by positive is going to be negative what negative three out okay. so which means the new graph of uh, basically, this is going to be what it's going to be like this. And remember, here it was two. So this is two, and this is going to be still two. How to get? So it's going to be two cos uh, subtract three. That is going to be a new graph. Now they say now, uh, now the range of this particular graph. Now what will happen uh, to the range of this new particular graph? Now, uh, 
uh let me just give it uh to you like this now uh the range of this new particular graph is going to be what now already now already we know that this graph is shifted how many units it is shifted to units uh in this case if this is uh negative two cos of what cos x minus three so basically this is uh the function of this graph right so this is the function of h of x and now which means what happened basically now and uh, now for the range we're just going to focus on this particular part because this is the one that determines your what that determines your vertical shift right so which means this point here your negative two uh, it is what it is negative two minus three, right? Because it's shifted three units downward now. And this two, what? It's going to be same as two also minus three, right? So which means if you are doing like this, now the first coordinate that you're going to have, it's going to be negative two uh, minus three, which is going to be what? Negative five. And the second coordinate here, it's going to be what? It's going to be two minus uh, three again, which is going to be what? And uh, which is going to be same as negative one. How to get? So, which means now uh, your range here, it's going to be what? It is going to be in between. So, which means your Y is going to be in between what? It is going to be in between negative 5 and negative 1. Or your Y is going to be the element of, and remember, whenever you're having the inclusion sign, even here, you're going to use the square like bracket. So, it's going to be in between negative 5 and what? And negative 1. And this is basically how you're going to solve this particular question. And then you get all your marks you move. Thank you very much for tuning in.